The public's attention these days is focused intently on the problem of global warming and the damage we're doing to the Earth. And UC Berkeley is getting attention of its own for going green in a big way fast. From its many energy-related research centers to new campus requirements for conservation, Berkeley leads the way in changing the way we think and act in order to save the environment. One of the biggest new developments on campus is the announcement of the Energy Biosciences Institute, a major research effort combining the expertise and investments of UC Berkeley, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and the BP Oil Company. This is great news for California and this is great news for America because it is the world's first research lab dedicated to long-term productions of alternative fuels and it's right here in California. With Berkeley's proximity to the technology sector and its track record for innovation, the administration has made its energy and sustainability efforts a top priority. Suddenly a lot of people are paying attention and we have now new avenues uh, a possible support for the research we must do, and these include private philanthropy, foundations, state government, federal government, and energy companies like BP. And so we now have a lot of very exciting possibilities, and we're pushing on all of these fronts simultaneously. To help us move away from using fossil fuels for transportation, EBI will invent technology to improve biofuels, fuels made from plants instead of oil. Nobel laureate Steve Chu, who directs the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory next to UC Berkeley, began an effort several years ago to accelerate the pace of developing more efficient forms of alternative energy. I became convinced that the climate change projections were inc increasingly ominous. We had to do something about it. I looked around and I realized that Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in partnership with the University of California, Berkeley, had the intellectual capacity to be a world center for the type of energy research that would lead to solutions. We needed uh, to enlist some of the best basic scientists and to consider shifting their career voluntarily to actually come together in teams and work on it. And so it really came with the idea of acting as a cheerleader, giving many talks, saying, this is a real issue. Can we get together and do something about it? And over the last two and a half years, it's been very heartwarming to see the level of enthusiasm. One of the things we're trying to accomplish with the EBI is to create a group of scientists and, and social scientists uh, that see all aspects of the problem. Chris Somerville is the new director of the Energy Biosciences Institute. He says that inventing technology that can use plants and their unique ability to transform sunlight to energy will have far-reaching effects for society. The energy in sunlight that strikes the surface of the Earth is about 10,000 times more energy than all the energy used by humans. So if we could capture just 1% of that, which is what a, a highly productive plant crop can do, uh, we would only need 5% of the terrestrial surface to meet all human energy needs. This is the site for the new facility that'll house the Energy Biosciences Institute. It's in the Berkeley Hills, right on the boundary between the UC Berkeley campus and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. The construction will be funded with part of the $500 million BP grant, which will be spread over the next 10 years. This is going to infuse a lot of interest and energy in people and channel people uh, towards biofuels and biological solutions to the energy problem. Carolyn Bertozzi directs LBNL's Molecular Foundry next door to the future EBI building. The foundry's expertise in nanotechnology, that is technology that works on the scale of tiny molecules, will be useful for EBI's biofuel scientists. They can take advantage of our instruments, our materials, our scientists, our knowledge and our capabilities, and they can also bring new interesting problems to the table and will mobilize to work towards solving these problems. The Energy Secretary has proposed the goal of getting 30 percent of all transportation fuels in the U.S. from biomass by 2030, but I actually think uh, we'll meet that goal far before 2030. Always look at your cultures, look at the kind of patterns that you're getting. Beyond the dozens of Berkeley projects devoted to energy research, the university recently took a serious look at the amount of greenhouse gases that the campus emits. 
the Chancellor made a commitment to cut those emissions down to 1990 levels within seven years. Since 2005, UC Berkeley and all UC campuses have adopted new requirements for things like constructing and maintaining buildings with recycled and sustainable materials and switching to more energy efficient lighting, irrigation and climate control systems. And students have been very involved in these efforts. It was student input that got Berkeley's dining service to put into place the first certified organic salad bar at a university. I think that there is an awareness in Berkeley in general and in the, in the country as a whole of uh, moving towards sustainable agriculture, wanting to know where your food comes from, feeling comfortable about the, pra the pra farming practices and what we're doing to the earth, um, global warming. All those issues are important to people and I think that this ties in with that. I think in general our society promotes chemicals and artificiality more than it should and it's, it's nice to get back to that kind of more wholesome type foods. Berkeley is essentially leading the way and saying this it really is possible, this isn't just a dream, this is something that some motivated people can make happen at their institution. At the urging of the student government, the campus student union is now solar powered. Students have even set up apartments in their residence halls to promote a greener lifestyle. Desiree Early is majoring in environmental economics and policy. So by green apartment we mean that it has environmentally friendly products and alternatives to regular products that a student would use. So we're really trying to make um, being an environmentally friendly student easy and doing all the research on all the products and putting them into um, little note cards that students can look at so that way they don't have to do the research themselves if they want to be a little more environmentally friendly. In so many ways, the campus is getting greener by the day, and the intention of many campus officials, faculty, and students is that the green coming out of Berkeley will rub off on the rest of the world. I'm Roxanne Makashjan at UC Berkeley.